Hi, I'm Atul, and I am in uh, London right now. Hi, I'm Paul, and I'm in Burnley, Lancashire right now. Okay, so today we're going to have a look at uh, calculating the pH of mixtures of strong acids and strong bases. Um, these are the five steps that we need to, to go through. So essentially the first three steps are calculating which is in excess, the acid or the base. And once we know the, which one is in excess, we can calculate the concentration of the acid or base and then calculate the pH. So our first example here, we're going to have an excess of acid. So we've got to calculate the pH of the solution formed when 50 centimeters cubed of 0.1 moles per decimeter cubed of sulfuric acid is added to 25 centimeters cubed of 0.15 moles per decimeter cubed of sodium hydroxide. So the first thing we need to do is work out the moles of the acid and of the base. So we'll use our equation for calculating moles of solutions. So moles is concentration times volume. And we're given a concentration of sulfuric acid of 0.1. Now we're interested in the hydrogen ions. So every mole of sulfuric acid will give us two moles of hydrogen ions. And so the concentration of hydrogen ions is 0.2. And we times that by the volume. If we notice the concentration is in decimeters cubed, but our volume is in centimeters cubed. So we need to convert the centimeters cubed into decimeters cubed. So we do that by dividing by a thousand. And If we times that out, we would get 0 0.01 moles per decimeter cubed of hydrogen ions. And now just do the same for the sodium hydroxide, concentration 0 0.15. Every mole of sodium hydroxide will give us one mole of hydroxide ions. So the, the concentration is exactly the same. This time times by 25 over a thousand. And that will equal 0 0.00375. moles per decimeter cubed of hydroxide ions. Sorry, <laughs> calculating moles here. So this is moles, not moles per decimeter cubed. The absolute number of moles rather than yeah. the concentration. Yeah, I thought so. That's what calculating moles from concentration times volume. So now we work out the excess moles and you can see the hydrogen ions is in excess so be 0 0.01 take away 0 0.00375 and that would give us 0 0.00625 moles of hydroxide ions in excess. Oh, sorry, moles of H plus ions in excess. Just because the hydrogen ions are more? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm. 
And now to work out the pH, our equation for pH is minus the log of the hydrogen ion concentration. And our concentration is moles divided by volume. So we know the moles is 0 0.00625. And our volume, well, we've added 50 and 25 centimeters cubed, so that's 75 centimeters cubed. Divide that by 1,000 to get decimeters cubed will be 0 0.0. 75. So the minus log of that gives us a pH of 1.08 to do two decimal places. Okay, so that's how we'd calculate pH where the acid is in excess. Mm. And it makes sense intuitively as well to have a pH of 1 because it's more acidic. Yeah, that's the good thing about pH calculations. You have a good idea at the end of them if you've... Uh, done the calculation correctly because if it have ended up with an alkaline pH here with excess H plus we know we've done something wrong. Mm. So should we look at uh, an example with excess hydroxide ions? Yeah, let's see what comes out of that one. Eh? Hmm. Okay, so it's exactly the same process here. We work out the moles of H plus and moles of OH minus. So we'll start off with the moles of H plus. Which is concentration um, times volume. So we'll have twice as much H plus as sulfuric acid. So this will be 0 0.5 for the concentration times the volume over a thousand. And that should give us 0 0.0125 moles H plus. Mm. And then for the hydroxide ions, 0 0.2. Times 100 over 1,000. which is 0.02. And if we put them to the same number of decimal places, right, it's a bit easier to see which one is in excess. Mm. So we've got 0 0.0200 against 0 0.0125. We can see the hydroxide is in excess. And so we've got excess hydroxide moles not point not two hundred take away not point not one two five and that would give us not point not not Seven five. So now we need the concentration to work out just an extra step for hydroxide ions, because first of all we need to work out the H plus, because all we've got at the moment is the OH minus. So our H plus.
is kW over OH minus. KW is a constant under standard conditions. That's 1 times 10 to the minus 14. And our hydroxide ion, and this is concentration, so we'll have to do 0 0.0, 0 0.75 moles divided by the volume. Uh, this is it's in a volume of 125 centimeters cubed because we added 25 to 100 centimeters cubed. And so 125 divided by 1,000 is 0.125. So that comes to 1.67 times 10 to the minus 13. And then once we know the hydrogen ion concentration, we can work out the pH. So minus the log of 1.67 times 10 to the minus 13. And that gives us 12.78, uh, which is what we'd expect for um, excess hydroxide ions. And uh, yeah, just out of curiosity, actually, I don't know much about this, but this KW, presumably this one times ten to the minus fourteen, this this minus fourteen is uh, on the extreme end of the pH scale. Is it's got, it's got anything to do with that? Yeah, yeah KW is called the ionic product of water, and it comes from the if we rearrange that, the hydrogen ion concentration times the hydroxide ion concentration which are um, in water in pure water equal and but at very small concentrations uh, 10 to the minus 7 each under standard conditions which is why you get the 10 to the minus 14 so it comes from the small concentrations of hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions in in pure water of course, yeah, takes us to the basically the disassociation of water into hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions, which doesn't happen a lot at all. It happens a very, very small amount in the pure water. Yeah. Mm, exactly, but it's it's where we get the pH of uh, neutral water at, at, at seven from, because minus the log of ten to the minus seven mm. comes out at seven. Mm. But that's only applicable at 25 degrees C. You'll have different values at different temperatures. Great, yeah, makes sense because it disassociates differently at uh, some sort of equilibrium, no doubt, at different temperatures. Exactly. So a common A-level question is to say um, you calculate the pH of pure water and it comes out different to 7. It might come out at 7.2. Mm. And then you're asked, oh, is that neutral? And some students might say, no, it's not because it's higher than 7. But it, it, it is neutral because the H plus and the OH minus are equal. It's just you're at a different temperature. Right. Yeah, that's a very useful one to just be aware of when students are at A level that the pH 7 is not the word of God yeah. for us <laughs> being neutral. It, it's what we could look at in another video calculating right. pH of water and strong bases. Sounds good, yeah. That's uh, that's great. Look forward to the next one, whenever that is, yeah. Okay. All right. Cheers. Thanks, Asil. Thanks, Thanks. Bye for now. Bye.